Well, the surprising things that I'm seeing right now is when I go to Europe. Right? When I go to Europe or I go to other developing countries, and they're asking us for these solutions now. They're not, we're not stymied by political environments or what have you. So surprising to me is when I go around and I see the affinity for what we're doing, what we're talking about in the various parts of the world, it's been absolutely mind-blowing how fast I think change can happen. You know, we look at parts of Germany, they're predicting by 2020 certain small parts are going to be 100% renewable. On certain days in Germany, 60% of all energy produced is by renewables, wind and solar, in Germany alone. And of course, now all of the utilities there are screaming because you know, they've been subsidizing this happening and now they're really hurting. But these well, things are... Well, and they've shed, in the last five years, the 20 biggest European utilities have shed a trillion dollars, a trillion euros of market cap yeah. uh, because yeah. of this. And so... But they are moving, and they're rap and where there's a will, political will, what have you, it's moving. So I'm surprised by all of these other things that are going to make examples of the U.S. mostly. Like, why aren't you doing this? So I'm hopeful that some of these other countries pop up much more rapidly, and or as rapidly as they are, to then tell us what we, or inform us on what we should be doing here. Can Can I add one international yeah, sure. point to this? Very yeah. short, because I don't want to sound like a parochial American in front of a. I mean. I think the other exciting thing over the next 10 years, there was a very arresting headline from, I think, a Citigroup uh, analyst report that said, for four, uh, for four billion people around the world, uh, solar electricity is the cheapest form of potentially available electricity for them. And none of them live in North America, Europe, or the developed parts of Asia. So let's start with the 1.8 billion people in Africa. Again, you know, using the telephone analogy, you know, they're just going to skip the fixed line phase, you know, just like they did on you know, cell phones. They're going to go straight to distributed because renewable. Because the grid is expensive to build. It's technically complicated. It's politically complicated. It's, well, there's the electrical grid, and there's also the, the information grid. We're seeing you know, various things of you know, satellites bringing connectivity there. You need both. To be able to manage this, as David said, you need IT. So it's got to be electrons, and it needs to be bits. So you're well, going to need both of those. It's just, it's just poignant now because the American coal industry is about to launch an advertising campaign saying that coal fire generation is the key to bringing low price electricity to poor people in developing countries, which is, uh, uh, there's probably press here. So I won't say anything more than just to leave it and leave that nervous Twitter that you heard in the, uh, <laughs> in the, in the room. But I mean, that is, that's just so not what's going to happen.